According to a new study funded by the National Institutes of Health, a substance in red meat may help toxins from certain types of E. coli target human cells, increasing the risk of illness. Here to tell us more about this is certified nutritionist Cynthia Sass from New York. Welcome, Cynthia. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Can you first tell us a little bit about this new study? Yes, this study was done at the University of California, San Diego, and basically what it found is that there's a substance in red meat that's actually a part of the natural anatomy of non-human mammals, and when you eat that red meat, the substance gets into your body and it basically sticks to your cells. And then if you're exposed to E. coli, this substance, which is sort of now attached to your cells, attracts the toxins that are produced by E. coli, which can make you a lot more sick. So there's an, you know, just another indicator that you might want to cut back on your red meat consumption. Um, too much red meat has been linked to about a 20 to 30 percent increase in the risk of certain cancers, including lung cancer and colorectal cancer. Well, so it's just something that we want to be aware of. Sure, and, and that news is especially disturbing considering the recent outbreaks of uh, E. coli that we've seen in this country. Absolutely, and if you're a high-risk group, if you're an older adult, you're a child, you're a pregnant woman, it's even more serious. And so how much is too much red Red meat. Well, according to the American Institute for Cancer Research, they put the cap on it at 18 ounces a week. Now, six ounces is about the size of two decks of cards in thickness and in width. So if you imagine going out to a restaurant and you get a steak, it could be 18 ounces <laughs> right there. That's so 18 ounces a week is the, is the kind of what you want to keep in mind. And I think it's a good uh, visual to use a deck of cards. That's about three ounces right there. Mm -hmm. So every time you have a serving of red meat, think about a deck of cards. And um, I think that limits limiting at that per meal is a good idea. But you know, Cynthia, there are so many people that are told to eat more red meat by their doctors, you know, pregnant women, that they need iron. So right. what would you tell those people? Well, if you want to keep red meat in your diet, which you certainly may want mm -hmm. to do, and it is a good source of iron and zinc and protein, it can be very lean, but you want to look for two words when you're shopping for the red meat. You want to look for the words loin and round. So things like sirloin and eye of round, those are the leanest cuts. And actually trimming the visible fat on the red meat can cut the fat in intake by about 50 percent and then cooking it with lean uh, types of cooking methods like stewing it um, or grilling it is another good thing. If you're going to grill definitely marinate because the substances that are also known carcinogens that are produced when meat is grilled can be reduced by almost a hundred percent by marinating the meat even just for oh. 30 minutes before you cook it. Wow so. I had no idea that's a, yeah. that's actually really good advice right. and are there some substitutes for red meat that have yes. some nutritional similar nutritional qualities? Uh, well you know what this is very interesting interesting. A recent Johns Hopkins study found that replacing ground beef with chopped mushrooms was in just one meal was able mm. to cut calories by 400 and cut fat grams by 30. That is really significant. And then what was really interesting about the study was the mushroom eaters reported being just as full and satisfied and they didn't compensate by eating more calories later in the day. So in your tacos, your burritos, your pizza, you know, your stuffed peppers, you can put chopped mushrooms in place of meat. And the great thing about mushrooms, they only have 50 15 calories per cup sliced. A cup is about the size of a baseball, so that's very low. And they're a great source of selenium, which is a major antioxidant, and they're very high in immune-boosting zinc, which is also found in red meat. They're not very high in, uh, in protein, but mm -hmm. you can also do half and half. If you want to mix half ground beef and half mushrooms, that's another great idea, too. Was there too. a particular type of mushroom used in the study, or any no, mushroom Any will do. kind of mushrooms you want. Well, that's good yeah. to know. I love mushrooms. So. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that's good news. Now, how can reducing red meat help your overall health? It, it definitely can help with the environment because, of course, it takes a lot of natural resources to produce meat in comparison to, say, beans or, you know, something that's a plant-based food. Um, you know, red meat can be very high in saturated fat, which we know is a major, you know, booster of the bad cholesterol in your body and ups your risk of heart disease, the number one killer of men and women. Of course, it contains cholesterol like all animal foods do. Um, I think a really important thing to keep in mind though for cancer in particular is that when you when you have your red meat keep to the three ounces the deck of cards and always combine that or pair that with at least one baseball of vegetables because research shows that having having just one additional baseball or cup of vegetables per day mm -hmm. can cut your cancer risk by up to 20 percent and then mm -hmm. when you cook those vegetables or you prepare them you want to include a little bit of plant-based fat maybe you have a salad with olive oil you saute your vegetables in some kind of healthy mm -hmm plant oil or maybe you have guacamole with your beef fajitas because mm, you will boost good. the antioxidant absorption of those vegetables by 10 percent or more or 10 times or more excuse me so you get 10 to 15 times more antioxidants out of those vegetables which are major cancer 
pre, you know, preventers mm -hmm. and protectors in your body. So okay, and Cynthia, I have something I want, really want to ask you about because I buy organic grass-fed meat, mm -hmm. and I want to know whether you think that really makes a difference, and what exactly does that mean? I absolutely think it does make a difference. On the on the negative side, it can be a lot more expensive. That's right. Sure. <laughs> and right now, I know people are really pinching their pennies, especially when it comes to the supermarket. But if you can afford it, and even if you just you know buy or organic grass-fed uh, red meat, and you just buy it less often, and you mm -hmm. eat more plant-based proteins other times, that can be a great idea. It is much leaner, um, and there's some research to show that it actually is higher in some really key important nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, you know the way the animals are fed. Um, um, they're fed all vegetarian feed. The feed is produced with no chemical pesticides or fertilizers. The animals are leaner and healthier themselves. And so, of course, that produces a healthier product that we put into our bodies. Well, I'm glad to hear that it makes a difference because I also think that it tastes better. Yeah, so. a lot of people do say that. It's very interesting that they're, the, what the animal eats is going to be you know, reflected in how the meat tastes. So if the animal's eating much healthier and the animal's healthier itself, it probably is going to taste a lot different. I think so. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia Sat for that insight into Thank red you. meat. I'll never look at a hamburger the same way again. <laughs> <laughs>